Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where we're celebrating the anniversary of Chuck Berry's only number one single that hit the charts this week. Now, before we get to what that song was and why the, it's somewhat of an ignominious hit, I think we need to credit Chuck Berry with one of the people that really invented rock and roll. The delineations between R&B and rock and roll were always somewhat fuzzy in their early days, but it was really the sort of musical canon of early rock that helped sort of draw some early distinctions between that genre and the genre which most inspired it, R&B. And the two men that you could really credit with this, I would say three men, frankly, uh, I and I would say equally are Little Richard, Chuck Berry, and Bill Haley in the Comets. And you could argue that over time, some of the most memorable rock and roll songs were in fact the ones that were written by Chuck Berry. Um, when you think about all of the hits he had, Maybelline, Sweet Little Sixteen, Johnny Be Good, Roll Over Beethoven, Nadine, Rock and Roll Music, these are, these are sort of, these are the standards no particular place to go you never can tell all of them are the, they're the sort of songs where any band not just in the rock genre but in any genre they will know these songs they have become a latter-day part of the great american songbook and yes they were written not very far off from many of those songs that are considered part of the great american songbook earlier in fact than others but because he was writing in a distinctly rock medium rather than pop it's sometimes forgotten that his songs are part of that canon that every musician knows now, Chuck Berry was someone who, much like many of the solo artists of his day, wouldn't actually take a band out on the road. He would just travel with his guitar and his amp, sometimes just with the guitar, because some, some of the clubs had amps, and just go from town to town. And again, this was somewhat typical of some, of I would say most solo artists at that time, except for the ones that had huge labels and huge, uh, and, and huge budgets behind them. And so this meant that he would entertain audiences in many different cities, because when you're traveling solo, you tend to travel faster than when you have other musicians, a whole rider of equipment and all the rest of it. Uh, it also meant that he played with a lot of local musicians. And it was this phenomenon of the solo artist traveling solo that helped a lot of local music scenes thrive. Because rather than putting a band together of session musicians from New York or London or L.A., you would just go to whatever town you're playing in and you would play with the best musicians or the available musicians in that town, which in some towns notoriously led to quality of his output that some people questioned, but they realized it was just that he would literally play with anyone because the shows he put on in the big markets that have a larger pool of good musicians, uh, his shows were great. And throughout the 60s and 70s, um, his shows were very well attended. Um, and he really, in the 70s in particular rode the sort of 50s revival uh, as far as it could take him. And that 50s revival never really slowed down. I have a previous video where I talk about why it was in the 70s that the 50s revival was so prominent. The 70s was an era where you had Vietnam, you had inflation, you had Watergate, and this semi-mythologized but semi-real, more real than most people think, image of the 50s was comforting to people. Didn't hurt that it was really good music that was somewhat more sing alongable than some of the music of the day. And it was in this era that this the only number one was scored by Chuck Berry. And it's kind of weird to think that someone who wrote the essential sort of birth tracks of rock and roll, the sort of creation myth music of rock and roll. He didn't get a number one with those, but he did get a number one with a song that he didn't even write, but he famously covered it in 1973, uh, sorry, 72 rather, and this was my ding-a-ling. Uh, now, we talked last week about how just a few years later, the radio DJ Rick D scored the final ever number one single for a novelty song with Disco Duck. Uh, 
uh, all about um, a man who turns into a duck at a discotheque. Profound stuff. Um, well, my ding a ling is equally profound. It's a song about wanting people to play uh, with your... Um, you can't say the D word on here. You can't say the C word on here. Uh, will the P word get me censored, even though it's a biological term? I don't know. But um, you can see that my head is blocking a certain part of Mr. Berry's anatomy, and you can tell what the song is about. Uh, so the song obviously caused a, a bit of a ruckus. Um, it was a lot of radio stations banned it, um, but it nevertheless became uh, a popular song. Uh, and a novelty song, um, which is, again, Fate Loves Irony, because Chuck Berry wrote the songs without which rock and roll, the genre that took over pop music in most of the second half of the 20th century, it might not be what it is without Chuck Berry, all credit, of course, to Little Richard and to Bill Haley. Uh, but the only time he gets to sort of taste that piece of the pie is uh, a novelty song, which just goes to show you that Serious music, while the bread and butter of, of music and arguably of life itself, people like to laugh. Laughter is really that the lost art form to die, because even after everything degenerates and dissipates, there will always be something to mock. People love a good novelty song, especially one that they can sing along to. And his last ever big hit and his only number one ended up being in the form of a novelty song. Who would have thunk it? But it helped to revive his career even more so. He was already writing the revival, but that really thrust him to the spotlight, pardon the pun. Um, and so sometimes it takes a novelty song for people to rediscover quintessential artists of the genre, even those whose behavior is sometimes more akin to the novelty than to the rest of it. But hey... Uh, bygones are bygones in this world of music, at least for a while, or at least until they shut us all down. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.